notice the nose high condition? It will eventually drag the machine back to the ground. With the same throttle setting, ease forward on the stick, accelerate forward faster and faster. Same throttle setting, but you will notice we left off in a different attitude, a more flat attitude. The machine is flying. Okay, to be able to slow the machine down, we start crabbing it back and forth, back and forth with the rudder, and trying to move the stick back, back, back. Still the same throttle setting. The point we're trying to show here is you can induce drag in the machine and drag it out of the air. You will notice we haven't touched the throttle, but the nose keeps rising. The machine is getting slower. Slower. And you're down. The machine refuses to fly on that power setting. We never touch the throttle. We can ease the stick forward. By experimenting with this and being able to balance on the main gear, you can keep adding throttle. Any change in throttle will change your attitude setting, which is your stick control. You have to compensate with this to be able to balance the machine on the main wheels. More power, more power, holding the machine level, and pretty soon it will fly off the ground in a level attitude. Maintain about four or five foot altitude, start easing off on the throttle, easing off on the throttle, trying to hold it in the air but moving the stick back, and you'll touch down with the stick all the way in the rearward position. Repeat that again. Hold the correct attitude with the machine, with the control stick. Apply the power, keep compensating with the stick, more power, and you're often flying in a level attitude. See the relation of the keel to the ground. Ease off on the power. At about two or three feet, you attempt to hold the machine in the air with the control stick. Your goal is to touch down with the stick all the way back. Very short ground roll. You should practice this many, many, many times down the runway. Just leapfrog condition, take off in the proper attitude, maintain stability at four or five feet, and then land. Notice the attitude at liftoff. Nose is not high. Ease off on the throttle. At about one or two foot, attempt to hold again in the air. Stick is all the way back as you touch down. Hold the nose wheel off as long as you can. As we progress, let's attempt some gentle S turns down the runway. Very shallow at first. Keep increasing bank until you are making almost 90 degree turns across the runway. Start very, very shallow at first and just work into them. Apply a little pressure to the control stick, the direction you want to go, very, very slightly, and experiment until you get the hang of it. After a few of these, you'll be ready to take off, climb to altitude, and fly the pattern.
there are three basic landings. This one here is dragging on with power, same as you did in the leapfrog sessions. Getting to your three or four feet, easing off on the power, attempting to hold it in the air, and settling to a nice landing. The next one is reduced power landing, which your glide angle is increased. Starting your flare at about four or five feet off the ground, settling to two or three, and attempting to hold it in the air. The third and the most important landing is power off landing. The only difference is your glide angle is much steeper to maintain your 45 to 50 miles an hour airspeed. Start rounding off the same as before. In the last two or three feet, attempting to hold it in the air as long as possible with a control stick. You should practice all three landings and know them thoroughly. When you have successfully conquered all the things we have covered, practice, practice, practice. Get to be a part of the machine. Know your ability and your gyrocopter's limitations. Just good flying practice is to keep a landing spot in gliding range and be able to put your gyrocopter in it safely. If you can do this and maintain your equipment properly, you will be rewarded with many years of trouble-free flying as I have.